Our contestant Rower is here at Post 9 with a very special guest contestant. Yeah, thank you very much for being here. Uh, Peter Jackson, the CEO of Flutter, you were just standing there at the top ringing the bell. What an exciting morning. Here's my question. If you're number one in a market share, if your revenues are growing so substantially and you came out with the trading update that showed that, why does it matter? We're very excited to be launching on the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, you know, our U.S. business, the Fangio business, has been growing enormously in the last few years. So to be able to bring the, you know, the opportunity for U.S. investors to, you know, to buy Fangio and also buy our international business is something we wanted to do. And you know, we were delighted to ring. I was delighted to ring the bell this morning. It's very cool. Just before I came up on uh, said I checked where the stock under the ticker symbol FLUT is trading. Looks like it was about 208. What are your expectations for the way that this excites U.S. investors, institutional investors, but also I know you've been missing out on a big share of earned media that DraftKings gets because it's publicly traded. Well, look, that's exactly why we wanted to have our stock listed here, and so to make sure we could take advantage of some of that, uh, so that media coverage. And I think from our, from our perspective, you know, I've met a lot of domestic U.S. investors who've been wanting to invest in Flutter. The higher levels of liquidity you see on the New York Stock Exchange in comparison with the European exchanges is something which they said will be very attractive. Uh, and, you know, we, and we hope to benefit from that. Uh, right now, this is your most important market, the U.S., for revenue, for growth. When does it also overtake the rest of Flutter's international business, European business, and elsewhere in profits? Our international businesses have grown revenues between 5 and 10 percent historically. So it's been a very solid performance. We've added to that with M&A that we've made in time. Now, here in the States, it's all been about growth. I mean, clearly, we were the first business to become profitable last year, and we're the number one operator here in, in Fangio. And I think that you know, from our perspective, there's opportunities to keep growing Fangio and our international businesses. I'm curious about seasonality. I assume football is far and away the biggest revenue generator, but there's more frequency in basketball and baseball. I wonder if you see any, uh, if that smooths out over time. Look, Q4 and Q1 are the most important quarters for us. You know, everyone knows that the Fangio business is synonymous with you know, the Parlay product, and that's particularly relevant for, the, um, you know, for football and for basketball. And so when people can play those uh, same game parlays, that means that our you know, Q4 and Q1 uh, quarters are much bigger for us than the other quarters in the year. Now, outside of the States, though, and this is where you get the benefits of our diversification, of course, you know, you'll see horse racing, soccer, you know, all the other sports that you know, come to fore in the rest of our markets. Peter, how would it wondering what you think the ultimate size of this market is, domestic sports betting, and, and whether, in fact, the largest first movers have an ongoing advantage. I mean, I try to think of other sort of network effects type businesses. It doesn't necessarily mean like you need more users to have a better experience as you would for social media, for example. I think from, for our business, you know, data does help us, right? When I think about the, num you know, the amount of bets we'll have seen flowing through our systems you know, in that Lions game last night, yeah. it means that we can get sharper with our pricing, which means we can offer even better value to our customers. It allows us to offer a broader range of markets as well that we can be more accurate with our pricing on. So data definitely helps us there. And we're like other digital businesses, that the economics flow disproportionately to the scale player because of the operating leverage we get into our business. So, you know, look, we are a long way, you know, in front, you know, in comparison with a lot of other operators in the market. Our technology, you know, we get a lot of advantages because we leverage our European teams and their expertise to help us here in the States. And I'm sure that we can stay ahead of the competition.